This is Dino Dan from Cypress, California, and you're watching the Barbecue Central Show. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Hit me. Fine. How you going? <laughs> <laughs> you have a great show. I'm a big fan. Boing. So what? What? What seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate two feet wiener. Oh, listen, Lavernius, shut your face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. <laughs> top men. And just like that, we are into the second hour. It's the Barbecue Central Show, where we talk about only the most high-level barbecue and grilling items that are occurring today, this week, through the next number of weeks and months. We'll see what happens. This is why we do it live every week. So to come on the show this evening, Susie and Todd Bullock from HayGrillHay.com. And we are open to close the show, so... No reason to rush through Susie and Todd, but we will talk about the tease of the Barbecue Central Show shirt that I talked about in the top of the show. Also, another uh, a number of other items that I want to talk about, not the least of which is why we have a engineer and producer on the show this evening. Uh, This is, I mean, it's kind of usually the background, but I have the old microphone. I have this chair that I hate. And I'm sitting in a completely different spot in the studio, but we are doing it because we're announcing it here live right now. I got breaking news. Give me the breaking news. A Barbecue Central Show exclusive news update. Greg Rempe reporting the breaking news desk here in Cleveland, Ohio, the city that breaks the most live fire breaking news across the country. Nay, the globe. In a week's time, August 27th, where I was going to have to cancel the show because of a work obligation, which I hate. (laughs) This lady that you see to the left of me, my middle daughter, Maddie Rempe, said, I'll pick up I'll pick up that slack. I'll run the show live. I said, you run run the show live. You've never done a show in your life. I can do it. Yes, I will. I said, all right, well, let's do it. I'm going to do it. So next Tuesday, while your humble host will not be here, your humble co-host will be here and just give a smidge of what the listeners might expect next week or tell them what they cannot expect next week, if that would be easier. Okay, so don't expect anything that my dad normally talks about. So that includes barbecue and grilling. I will not be talking about that because I don't have a lot of knowledge on that topic myself. You just eat it. I just eat it. But you guys are more than welcome to ask me questions and I'll answer them. That would be fun. What kind of questions? Like you, They could ask cooking me. Cooking questions? Like, do I have a favorite food you make uh, yeah. or do I have a favorite this? What's... How would you do this? How would you do that? How would I do this? I'd give it to my dad. That's the answer every yeah, time. Right. Um, do I cut the membrane off my ribs? Do you? I don't make ribs. Oh, you should. I should what? Make ribs or sure, cut the membrane should. off? You take the membrane Maybe off. Maybe both. I do. Yeah, I knew that. I'm going to stop it though. Why? Aaron Franklin said don't do it. Okay, Aaron. So I'm going to stop it. Well, I listen. mean, you know Aaron. We just found out he's a rock star. Yeah. Literally and figuratively, both in the barbecue world and in the music world. That's true. And I said, I pulled eight membranes off of eight racks of ribs, of course, but I didn't want to do it. And he said, don't do it. Just stop. We don't do it at the restaurant. None of the best Texas restaurants are pulling rib membranes. We'll ask Susie and Todd next segment if they're membrane pullers. On the back of baby back ribs, yes, but it's a whole different process. Very... Very easy. There's a whole little thing you can do, and you just 
pull them off yeah. in one yank, but not on spare ribs. Spare ribs are much more labor intensive. And even if it's taking you, you know, 30 to 45 seconds, well, that's pretty much a minute. Almost, and if you have eight racks of ribs, that's eight minutes that you can't get back from your life. That is true. We say good evening to those of you. Well, so uh, Maddie will be hosting the show live next week. Oh yes, because I, I will not be here if because there, of a work uh, a, a work requirement. Yes. Um. To I guess I could give you a hint of what I would be talking about. I'm pretty sure my younger sister Marley is coming on. You guys know her. She's also uh, a singer, a, a sing reviewer, a song reviewer. Yeah. Yes. And then I'm pretty sure Steve is coming on. Army Steve. Army Steve. Soldier of the year. This is true. And then I may or may not be having a special interview with somebody I cannot disclose. Wow. In studio? Yes. Oh, all right. I don't even have to send any gear out. Great. Special guest. And then you may or may not be back. You need to keep not, your mouth towards the I'm microphone. Sorry. Don't look at me. Okay. You I'll, can see me right there. No, I can't. Don't you have it's, the screen up? No, you told me not to put it up. No, I didn't. You said this is what you look at. So I'm looking. Oh, hold on. I'll put it up. There, it's up. Okay, now I can see. Yeah. Well, no, you won't have to send anything out. Right. Is it a big name? I forgot what I was saying. Big, you have a big name coming in in studio next week. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all I can say. Oh, yikes. All right. It's a secret. We say good evening to those of you watching tonight through one of our video streaming platform partners, Facebook.com slash BBQ Central Show, the Twitter.com slash BBQ Central Show, also on YouTube, which is YouTube.com slash at BBQ Central Show. We also have a new YouTube poll question of the week, and we're asking everybody this. Sorry. Do you like smash burgers, or do you like regular hamburgers? Where are we at, Maddie? We are at 48% prefer regular burgers. What? And 52% prefer Smash Burgers. All right. So Smash Burgers are still in the lead. I Believe it or not, I looked at it while you were doing the last read. Yeah. It, it had flip-flopped. It is now it flip-flopped again back to it Smash did. Burgers in the lead. Yeah. Uh, one coming up, it was 50-50. Coming up on the best moments of the Barbecue Central show this coming Friday, episode 347, taking you back to August 26, 2008, featuring longstanding guest of this show, at one point, a monthly guest, believe it or not, the author of the Barbecue Bible, amongst many, many other live fire books, our pal Stephen Reichlin, who was supposed to be on in the first hour. This wasn't the first time he was on this show, but it might have been the first time he was on the show during its live version. And yes, John, I do know my Stephen Reichlin show history. Stephen was my first big named guest when he was just or when I was just doing the podcast show. He was the biggest name that I'd got at that point, even before the live version started in 2008. Steven even sneaks in some French words at the tail end of the clip, so be ready for that. Steven, always a great guest. So be ready this coming Friday for another great Best Moment show. You can subscribe to that by visiting the website, thebbqcentralshow.com slash subscribe. And don't forget, if you want to hear a guest or segment again on the show, that's been lost in the archive, uh, archives. Email John and let him know you would like to hear J-O-N at thebbqcentralshow.com, and he'll do his best to meet your expectations. The Famous Dave's All-Star Barbecue Series rolled into Sioux City, Iowa this past weekend, and winning it was none other than Mad Chad's Barbecue, Reserve Grand Champion, Rack Shack Barbecue, both the Grand Champion and Reserve Grand Champion, earned spots in the 2024 World Food Championships in the Barbecue Division. That happens this coming November in Indianapolis, Indiana. And the next and last Famous Dave's All-Star Barbecue Series event is this coming Saturday, August 24th in Columbia, Maryland. And believe it or not, as of 
Five hours ago, there was still one spot open. So if you want to take part in the very last Famous Dave's All-Star Barbecue Series event for this season, at least, as we wrap up season number two, there is one spot left for you to try your hand at not only winning that, but qualifying for the 2024 World Food Championships in Indianapolis, Indiana. You can find out all the past results by visiting the website worldfoodchampionships.com slash allstars. And can we go back to the best moments promo just for a second? Am I the only one that becomes immediately annoyed when a traditional English speaker then starts to speak French. If Stephen would speak Italian or German or Spanish or pretty much any other language, I wouldn't even think twice about it. But the second that French starts coming out of his mouth, my annoyance level spikes. I find it highly annoying. Maddie, if somebody starts speaking French, that you know to be a normal English speaker, do you find that to be annoying or my way off base? I think it depends on how much they're forcing a French accent when they're speaking French. Like if they're isn't just, that part and parcel? Like, I don't know what that means. You'll, like, uh, like if I was going to speak French right now, am I forcing a French accent? By the way, that wasn't French for anybody that was trying to figure out what I just said. Uh, I don't know. Well, you speak like, French, I Maddie. Could... Give me some French. No. No? Je m'appelle Maddie. Like, that's forcing a French accent. Yeah. But if I was just going to say it like this, I would say bonjour, je m'appelle Maddie. But that's too American. Well, I'm people not outside in of Ameri- People outside of America I'm hate in America. Americans. Yes, I understand. But it shows maybe a lack of interest on the American side that you're really trying to be authentic for the country you're trying to speak in. Maybe. You remember that, uh, what's her name from Food Network, Giada? She would talk regular, you know, because she's an American. And then whenever she would get to an Italian word, she would gimmick up and go ultra yeah. Italian, try and say it like. But doesn't she speak Italian? It's a big deal. And isn't her family from Italy? I don't know anything about it. All I know is she's giving you direction and recipe, what have you. Are we paused? Yes. Oh, oh you got to tell. We got to stay on time. We got Susie and Todd waiting I'm in the sorry. green room. What are you doing? You were going on about friends. But I'm not important. I'm just trying to fill time. All right, look. All right, here we, we go. We have many important. Susie, Todd, forgive me. We're learning on the job. Forgive me. I'm forgive sorry. Me. Forgive me. You can yell at her in a moment. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, In the meantime, Maddie, pay a bill. The backyard version of the famed pit built by Aaron Franklin for his renowned barbecue restaurant in Austin, Texas. Franklin Barbecue, built for those barbecue purists who want to take their craft to the next level. What have... What you have with the Franklin Pit is a deeply thought out and refined version of the old propane tank style cookers that Aaron built for Franklin Barbecue. Stylistically, it reflects the kind of bare bones, industrial, handmade aesthetic he loves, as in the patina and the way the build allows you to see the welds and the craftsmanship. The schematics of a Texas style offset barbecue pit are relatively simple, even if the things that happen inside reflect complicated dynamics of physics and chemistry. There are very few moving parts here. Numerous and massive differences divide this Franklin pit from the average barbecue smoker sold at a big box store. For one, much of the challenge of building and shipping these pits come with the thickness and heaviness of the materials, but also much of the value. Cheap smokers are made from thin metal. Not only does cheap material tend to warp and crack when sustaining the kind of heat you need to make great brisket, but especially on a cold day, the thinness of the metal just sheds the heat and struggles to maintain consistent temperatures. The Franklin pit is primarily made of 5 16th and quarter inch thick American-made steel. That's strong. Anything that sees heat is engineered to be incredibly solid and should last a century or more if cared for properly. The thickness of that steel guarantees professional-grade heat retention, which is a critical component to making great barbecue. Every Franklin pit is unique unto itself with its with its to include their own natural markings and its own badge number. 
Franklin Pits can be found at fine barbecue specialty stores in select regions of the country. If you, the listener, are an owner of such a store and wish to become a certified Franklin dealer, please visit franklinbarbecuepits.com and fill out the dealer form. If you, the listener, want to own a Franklin pit and live in a part of the country that doesn't have a certified Franklin dealer nearby, you can also visit franklinbarbecue.com and purchase a pit. Franklin Pits will ship a Franklin Pit to your driveway. All right. Very good. Maddie, thank you very much. And That was long. We have Susie and Todd Bullock from Hey Grill Hay ready to come on, so stick around. We'll be right back. Stern, Jim Rome, Dan Patrick, and Greg Rampey. The Mountain Rushmore of talk show entertainment. Now, let's get back to the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. Leading off the second hour, joining me for what I believe is her third quarterly appearance in 2024 is the creator of the Hay Grill Hay brand, Susie. And, of course, Todd Bullock joining us here on the show. All right, guys. Uh, wait, it's just a Susie. No Todd? Todd uh, had to go record his other own podcast Food tonight. Idiot? The Food Idiot podcast. But yeah, Food Idiot is recording oh, tonight. Oh, Idiot. Uh. We, he is coming with me. We are going out to the Key West Invitational, and we're leaving tomorrow. So he wow. had to change his uh. podcast recording schedule yeah. to accommodate our travels and, and barbecue competing. So All right. Well, I was yammering My on apologies. and on. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, I mean, I, I love Todd not as much as you do, but if he can like take Everybody part in the Todd. show, I mean, it's it's value <laughs> add. But if not, you know, we have... The uh, we have the engineer behind the brand anyway, uh, Susie, the most important person, of course. So, uh, do you need to take a few minutes of issue with my daughter for letting me go on and on about my annoyance with uh, French people and or not French people, but Americans who are talking regular <laughs> English, and then as soon as they go into French, it annoys me, and then she just let me go on and on, taking away from your time. No, I love her, Maddie. Oh. Carry on. All right, you're Maddie. killing it, Maddie. Do Thank you have you. Uh, you have any questions? for Susie and I mean this is a very big star here <laughs> she's on TV she's a brand uh, a, a brand expert <laughs> recipe creator <laughs> a captain of industry not mm-hmm. at the moment no. I was going to wait until the end uh-huh. of the segment uh-huh. we, we can take questions, questions right. came yeah. from there you raise your hand if you got a question for Susie as we get through the minutes here of the conversation and okay. we'll go from there uh, heygrillhay.com the website of course and at heygrillhay on social medias we have a YouTube poll question of the week Susie that we're asking everybody smash burgers or regular burgers what do you like I am a regular burger girl. Oh. I don't think there is anything more delicious, more nostalgic than a classic 80-20 ground beef patty with beef rub on a charcoal grill. My family might disagree. I think they request smash burgers more regularly, but man, I'm a charcoal medium burger girl through and through. And I feel like smash burgers, there's just no way to do them anyway, but kind of well done to get the crispy edges, which is good, but... Maddie, where are we at That's on me. results for burgers? 44% prefer regular burgers and 56% prefer smash burgers. Well, look, over the course of I'm the show, the minority. it has, no, it is, it is switched back and forth five or six times. Regular burgers have been <laughs> in the lead, and then the next time we check, it's smash burgers, and then it flip-flops back yeah. and forth. I have fallen deeply, deeply in love with the Smash Burger, and I was late to the game. Like there was years of Smash Burger experience that had been laid down on all kinds of video platforms and stuff, and then finally yeah. I decided to do it once, and I was like, "Woof, this is absolutely Listen, crazy." I think I took the same ride on that roller coaster, and I swung for a while towards the Smash Burger realm, but I have come back. To a traditional burger on a charcoal grill. 
Charcoal Grill's key. That's a whole different flavor monster yes. on its own, too. That's the answer. Yeah. What about <laughs> regular burger on a pellet cooker? Um, I like smoked burgers, but only if I can finish them over high heat. Mm. Do you want the crust? You need Do you like medium texture. rare burger? Like you like pink in your I'll eat a medium, yeah. a little bit of pink. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know it's a bad idea, but I live on the edge. I, I get competing information. I've heard from what I think are fairly expert folks saying if you grind your own meat and you know where it's come from, that you can get away with a medium rare burger. Now, from a texture standpoint, I'm not medium rare burger guy, but I'll certainly venture into pink. I've had no problem with that. And then I've heard other people yeah. go, no, you can't do that. Meathead says, take your large cut of meat and then dip it quickly in boiling water to kill everything that's on the surface. Yeah. That way you're not grinding everything. What What's your take on meat grinding? I understand all of it, and I have ground my own burgers, and I will often grind my brisket trimmings to make mm -hmm. my own brisket patties mm -hmm. for burgers. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand the whole process and the food safety of it, and I certainly think it is recommended that if you are going to do a medium burger, you know, grind your own mm -hmm. and make it happen that way. But I also am not scared of eating a burger at 145 if I bought the whole muscle meat from the butcher and have them grind it for me. So like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit risky, but that there's the disclaimer that they put on all of the bottom of the restaurant yeah. menus, right? If you're ordering undercooked or if you're eating undercooked, you're at risk and you're gambling. And most restaurants, you don't, they're not they're not grinding their own <laughs> whole muscles no. um, in the back. And if they are, you have no idea what their care practices are. And so mm. it's on you to assume the risk of that. And I think it's the same at home. If you're not super confident with food safety practices and a little pink makes you nervous, go well done or try a smash burger. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not scared of a little bit of pink in there. I think there is a sweeping misconception that when you do a smash burger – you're squeezing all the juice out of it. And if you're executing it properly, it does maybe appear to give that aesthetic. But man, they are easily some of the juiciest burgers I've ever made. Stack two, three on top of them. You got the cheese yeah. melting and then you take that bite. I mean, it's coming down your chin. It's, uh, it's a great yeah. burger. Yep. It's not that they're not juicy and delicious. It really is kind yeah. of a, a, a final texture situation that I think it really comes down to. Middle of June, so a couple months ago, you had the distinct privilege or unhonor of actually meeting me in person at the Thermoworks event in Utah. We did. After years of quarterly segments. Yes. Name one <laughs> thing that surprised you about me in a live setting. Uh, you're a volleyball parent. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I am also a volleyball parent. Well, so we're in two different lifespans at this point in, in uh, volleyball parenting. So you yes. have like the little kids. I've lived it now like yeah. twice and we're through it. So like, yeah, where you are you? It. We're in the early stage. Are you My travel? Sophomore you, volleyball. So, sophomore in high school? high school. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. And she is on a travel club team uh -huh. that plays in the spring. So we are in it. Yes. What's the level of the travel? So I'm not going to take a dump on high school volleyball, but if there are collegiate aspirations, travel yeah. is where it's at because you can go to I a know. tournament and all these college coaches come outside of their own season so it's not competing i mean nobody goes yep. to a high school to watch one player anymore unless no. it's football and that's the <laughs> only sport everything else is travel so now they can go to yeah. chicago or salt lake and watch 300 girls at this particular age that they're trying to recruit and they do it all in the weekend and logistically it's convenient what what level are we shooting for with your daughter right now uh, she's on a team that's hoping to make a national bid this year and if they do i think we'll end up in I don't know. I can't wherever the national is going to we'll, be. Yeah. yeah, wherever it is. We'll see. But she loves, she's a very uh, social player. Yes. She likes the friends and the team building. I don't know how competitive she actually is. So mm. we'll see. But she's she's loving it for now. But she's on a team that is, uh, you know, so each club 
rank. They have national teams and then they have American yeah. teams and then regional. She's yeah. on national. That's what she's trying for this year. Oh, okay. so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What position? They. She is an outside hitter. Oh yeah. Yeah. She, she was a middle blocker for a while, but she yeah she can jump. All right. Right handed. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I guess she'd be an opposite. She'd be a key opposite too, left handed, because then it's like you got two outside hits. I know. Or this isn't a volleyball so show, block. but if you ever have any questions, anyway, but that I mean, was surprising. Wow, I'm such an expert. I can <laughs> certainly lead You're you down. You're such a volleyball dad. That's right. Uh, do you believe <laughs> that wireless probes are really the future of remote thermometering? Um, I think they're a tool that a percentage of grill owners will invest in. Hmm. Um, but I think most backyard cooks are capable of turning out absolutely delicious, phenomenal, fantastic food with a instant read thermometer. Um, and I think I think that can get the job done for most people. Mm. I think that the remote probe thermometers are a little bit maybe either intimidating or cost prohibitive, depending on the brand and the function for a lot of backyard cooks. And I'm not talking about enthusiasts because enthusiasts where barbecue is their hobby, which those are kind of the people we hang out with. So that's who we hear from the most often in the community is yep. like, wow, game changer. <laughs> Everything's better. We all need one. Uh, but the amount of like real hobbyists compared to people who casually cook barbecue maybe one or two times a week it's less a hobby and more a means to an end um i i don't think a majority of those backyard cooks will really feel the compulsion to own something at that level of tech and at that price point um so i think that they are awesome and i think that a lot of people will will really utilize them and love them and and benefit from having them but i think a majority really of backyard cooks a great instant read thermometer is baseline and it'll do everything you need i'm trying to wrap my head around this because finally this year there's going to be some really good quality remote uh, or wireless yeah. remote thermometering system thermoworks has one fireboard has just come out with one as well meter is tried to step their game up with some revision of whatever piece of crap they were selling, you know, before for years and trying to belt people out of millions <laughs> of dollars. I said it and you didn't, but there's going to be some really great options. So with you saying what you've said, I'm now questioning what kind of a, of a charge or bandwagon this wireless thing is going to be. And I now I'm comparing it to grill manufacturers sticking Wi-Fi and having apps for their grills so you can bump the temperature up and down and see where the temperature's at on your internal meats, this, that, and the other thing. And I've always questioned the grill manufacturers going, well, do you have any data that shows what percentage of your consumer is actually using that? Or do you feel as the manufacturer that you have to provide this? Because if you don't, even if nobody uses it, they might preclude you from buying because this grill has it and you box. don't. Yeah, right. So now Correct. I'm trying to figure it I'm trying to figure this out now. I I would say that I speak mostly in my business and my brand and across social media to people at the beginning stages of their barbecue journey. Um not necessarily to the expert or the avid hobbyist. And I posted quite a bit about, you know, one of the new thermometers that was coming out online. And the only messages that I got in reply about that particular thermometer came from people who are in the barbecue community, who have mm -hmm. their own barbecue social media handles. Not a lot of my regular everyday backyard folks were super excited about that particular item. So I do think it's going to have a very, I think those types of thermometers are going to have a very dedicated and vocal fan base within mm -hmm. the barbecue community. And I think a lot, they will be able to bring in people who are maybe starting to consider barbecue as more of a hobby for them and not just a, this is how I cook dinner sometimes. Um, so I think, I think they will have a market and I think they'll have a decent market and I think it will 
these types of products will be successful. Um, but the onus is going to be on these manufacturers to really sell the need of this type of product to the average backyard cook. Um, cause I think it will be considered more of a techie specialty item and not a necessity, if that makes sense. When we were together in June at this ThermaWorks event, we were having dinner at a large countryside mountainous estate. <laughs> we were having some conversation. You had mentioned that you were like pretty much you had written a book, but you hadn't mm -hmm. taken it over the goal line, I think is what I kept saying. <laughs> and you're like, you got to help me get this book over the goal. We were trying to figure out a whole bunch of things. And I said, well, geez, you've done the hardest part, which is actually write yeah. the book. This is the other stuff is like handing it off and go, where are we at? Are we going to see a Susie Bullock, <laughs> Hey Grill, Hey Book? Yes, I'm actually interviewing literary agents right now. Really? So we're going to go traditional publishing yes. and do a little bit of a book tour and a media tour. So right now it's finding the right agent and locking down the right publisher. But it's in, it's in, the, it's in the, the hands of the path now. We're moving forward. So how are you, It's good. How are you picking a literary agent? What are things most I important I got a lot of recommendations from friends of people that they worked with and that they published with in the past. And uh, I actually looked at some of my favorite books that I've seen published and opened the, you know, cracked the covers and saw who their agents were in the, you know, kind of credits and about and thanks to my publisher pages. Um, so I, ha I compiled a list of people that helped produce books that I really, really liked reading and I liked looking at and I love owning and I'm reaching out to all of them. And so it's, it's kind of, I think we're going to be working pretty closely together. So somebody that I have a good rapport with and a good relationship and has a great track record of, of books that I like is those are kind of my main priority. Has anybody talked about getting you immediately into a multi-book deal? No, I think we'll see once we start bringing stuff to publishers, what mm. level they're interest is. Do you have multiple you know? books in you, do you think? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I've written, my website has over 600 recipes on it. So the well has yet to run dry in terms of the type of recipes that I like to develop. And um, and the my particular method of teaching to, like I said, kind of that beginner backyard enthusiast and really making things really simple and really approachable and really successful without necessarily having to have a ton of experience under your belt. That's that's my sweet spot. So I can talk about that stuff all day long. So if they need recipes, I can keep churning out recipes, but we'll see. All right. So we'll grab an update as we close out 2024 where this uh, book is going to be coming in and when we might be able Perfect. to expect it. Labor Day is coming very soon. Uh, for some people, that signifies the <coughs> end of the grilling season, but nonsense. Any favorites that you guys make every year or the, anything like new that you're going to try out this year? Oh, man. I'm trying to think what I even have on the docket. So we, honestly, this is going to sound crazy, but we are getting all of our turkey kit stuff in right now. Oh, right. So we <sighs> usually run a couple of months ahead on content. So we are doing like turkey is happening end of September, early October for wow. us. So that. I know. So that's probably what we're going to be working on is some <laughs> some smoked turkey. Are you are you a big briner? I am. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I'm a big briner. And I I am a wet briner. I know that there is there's camps in in Brinesville if you are on team dry brine or team wet brine, but I like a wet brine. Is it because of the denaturing of meats to a degree, or do you find that there is a influx of flavor that, you know, dry brining is just salt, obviously, that you're sprinkling over the top, but do you feel like you're getting an extra flavor boost? Um, I do, and there are people that argue the par particles are too big. Like, obviously, a sprig of rosemary is not getting in there, but um, when we talk about, like, I brine in an apple juice, and liquid flavor is actually able to penetrate in certain ways. So I do, uh, I do a liquid brine. I think flavor is great, but for me, the real differentiator is, is I love the texture of a wet brine. I find it a little bit softer mm -hmm. and you'll hear people describe like you get a really juicy, um, bite 
on something that's dry brined and you get the salinity all the way through and it has a very particular texture. Um, wet brining also has a particular texture yep. and I find it a little bit softer and that's just preferential to my palate. So after doing all of the kinds, uh, wet brining seems to be my, my preferred method. If you have questions, you can just run right over to Susie's website and see what she's got posted there. <laughs> HayGrillHay.com, the website. Uh, please tell Todd I said hi. Great seeing you in person. And Todd, obviously, in June. And good luck this coming weekend at this uh, competition that you're leaving for tomorrow. Well, we'll get all the results next time. Uh. Yeah, so excited. We've got two all-women's teams, and last year they didn't have any women's teams. So this year we're bringing, bringing the heat and hoping to take home some stuff. And next time we're together, we have to talk about these. What is that? Oh, gloves? It's just a little tease. All right. We have developed some custom Hey Grill, Hey Grilling gloves. All right. So we're going to talk about that as well. Susie, always appreciate the, uh, appreciate the time, and we'll talk to you in a couple months. Okay, we'll see you, Greg. All right, there she is, Susie Bullock right there, heygrillhay.com, the website, and, of course, Hey Grill Hay on social media. I just nailed the post right there, man. Wow. That, that was, was good. Great. That was really good. I can't even see anything. I'm blind over here. Am I doing a read? Yeah. This You're going to. You want me to do it? I can do it. You're going to have to do it okay. next week. I know. That's why we're practicing. All right. All well, right. Are you you, uh, you take it away. <laughs> okay. Are you and begin. Okay. Are you ready to score that perfect 180 on chicken, ribs, pork, or brisket? Big Papa Smokers has you covered with the best rubs, sauces, and injections in the business. For a limited time, use promo code BBQ Central and get 10% off all Big Papa Smokers products. That's right, 10% off the secret ingredients that championship teams swear by and win with weekend in and weekend out. Don't miss out on this incredible offer. Whether you're aiming for a GC at your next barbecue contest or you're just looking to take your barbecue and grilled foods to the next level of awesomeness, remember, your food just got better with Big Papa. Offer valid through October 31st. Visit BigPapaSmokers.com and use promo code BBQ Central. That's pop BigPapaSmokers.com, promo code BBQ Central. Whole packers, full racks, legs and thighs, injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host Thanks. out there today, Craig Ripley. I see me in the confidence monitor, shocking. I keep thinking I'm going to be, when I look up, that I'm in my normal... I'm, you know, Remember, I'm so used to doing it one way. Now well, I'm doing it a completely different way, and it's like I look up to see, and I'm like, It's only for this week. Wah, 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 woo. It's only this wah, week. Wah, 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 Oh, okay. You should get a sound of that on here. I did have it at one point. Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue weighing in through the instant chat. Dear men, if you find a very beautiful girlfriend like Susie, and she likes barbecue. Marry her ASAP. Good advice, Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. By the way, Joe, do we have an update on uh, Martin Martinez and his barbecue food truck in El Paso, Texas? What's the update, Joe? Or should I call you Martin? Maddie, do you think Joe Martinez is actually Martin Martinez? Sure. Yes, of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. He is. Everybody knows that. Yes, he is. All right, we thank Susie Bullock for joining us last segment. Maddie, give us an update on the YouTube poll question of the week. Do you prefer smash burgers or regular hamburgers? Regular burgers is at 45%, and 55% of people are preferring smash burgers. All right. I, Me too. I love Smash. But you like, I was going to well, ask you, if you like Smash or regular? I don't, I think I. Have I we, think have I we prefer, overdone the Smash burgers? You know, when we do something new here in this house, it's like. You do You it guys again hate pork again. tenderloin. You guys hate chicken thighs. You hate a lot of great food that I make because Ch I've you just. You say chicken thighs? Chicken thighs. I eat chicken thighs. Bobby doesn't. Oh. Bobby doesn't like Anything. grilled chicken. 
She's weird. Yes. If it's chicken, I will eat it. Mm. Pork, eh. Yeah, no pork tenderloin for you. No. Too much? I just too I much don't as think a youth. I've, no, I just don't think I've. I don't oh, know. Pork oh, is oh. it's just not my favorite. Mm. I would rather have like, something else. You like pulled pork? Yeah. Like pulled pork separated out of pork tenderloin, pork loin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But we've done too many smash burgers, is what you're saying. We just got into the groove too much. No. No. That's not what I'm saying. All right. I like smash burgers, but I also like regular burgers. Yes. Because when you're good, when you go to Five Guys, regular burger, but Shake Shack, smash burger. Oh yeah, I, and they're both good. No, Shake Shack way better than Five Guys. Really? Don't you think? I've only had Shake Shack once. Give me a drum roll, everybody in the instant chat. Subsequent YouTube poll question of the week: Which one is better? Five Guys or Shake Shack? I am, of course, giving you the right answer by saying Shake Shack. But I am a fan of Five Guys, and the newest one next to our house, or by our house, has stepped up their game. We went there not too long ago, and it was much better yeah. than the first time we went. The first time we went was trash. It was unexpected. Yeah. It was almost heartbreaking. But do you only like, do you think Shake Shack is better because they're doing smash burgers? It's just about, to me, taking the type out of the equation. Mm-hmm. I just always had a more consistent and magical experience at Shake Shack with their burgers. I mean, F the fries. I don't care about that. Five Guys wins on fries, and it's not even close. Yeah. Five, five Guys, guys wins on fries. I'm about to make a very bold statement. Five Guys wins on fries across the board of a restaurant's best fries ever. They're great. Oh, no. You don't think I'm just saying because it's a controversial it? statement. <laughs> I think. And the oh, amount no. that they give you, like small fry, they fill up the little small thing, but then they throw in eight scoops of fries in the bag. So if you've never been to Five Guys and you're by yourself, just get the small fry and thank me later. Or get the, get the kids fry. Get the fat, large fry and then go, oh my God. Have fries for a week. Lesson learned. He was right in Cleveland. He said, don't do that. He said, get the small fry. It's more manageable for one human. Or large fry if you got two or three people. Plenty. I like plenty. But they're, they are easily the best fries across the board. Don't give me McDonald's. Don't talk to me about Wendy's fries. What about curly fries? No. <gasps> not even, like from Arby's? Yeah. No, no. Not even close. Those are some, those are some trash fries. You know who has bad fries? And this is going to be a big statement for me. All right, let's hear it. Because it's one of my favorite roll places. It, roll it before you say, one of your favorite places. Hmm. Wingstop has terrible fries. Oh, no. Soldier Boy, plug your ears. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Wow. I get Every time I get Wingstop, I think to myself, like, I should not get the fries. I know every time I get them, I'm disappointed. They're not crispy. What are they're you really, them for every time? They're really then? fat. They're really fat, like thick. What? Oh, <gasps> fat! Yes. And the normal fry seasoning that they put on them is kind of sweet, and I'm not. I don't. I don't love it. But you can change it, and you can get the Cajun seasoning, and that makes it a little bit better. But no, no matter how many times I put, well done, extra cook time for the fries. Trash. They're just never crispy but that also could be because they're sitting in a closed bag yeah but it's only three minutes from here to here to there that too they're not dying in transit yeah i have the same conversation with steve every time i'm like i know i should not what are you getting getting them for i I stopped oh i stopped getting fries thank goodness the last time we got them oh my gosh smoke and joe's pit barbecue just said wing stop is trash all the way around no doubt joe you're right joe you were a lot you were wrong on a lot of things this year. A lot of things. You are right no. when it comes to that. Wingstop is straight up trash. That is crazy. It's ass. When was the last time you had Wingstop? 
the first time I had it. And guess what? It sucked. So I never went back. I learned my lessons. And you want to know something? When I was in Florida. When? Grandma, when were you in Florida? Last week. What? Don't do this. What were we? Don't do this. I just get it. I just get it. <laughs> I know you Last were week, when I was talking to Grandma and Pops, they said that there is a rempy trait where if you go somewhere and it's bad the first time, yeah. you never go back. And I was like, yeah, that's how my dad is with Swenson's. Because you don't I like mean, Swenson's. I went there many times. Trash. I don't agree with that I either. I will not opt to go there anymore. Look, you're taking my time. How much time is left? Six minutes. All right. I got to get through Six this. Otherwise, 40 seconds. Otherwise, we're, we're not going to make it. Let okay. me tell you. Drum roll, please. For everybody. Actually. Oh. Matt in Indiana wrote in weeks ago. Hey, Greg, just started listening. Really enjoy the show. I've been cooking on the Big Green Egg for a while, but recently purchased a Rectech Dual Fire 1200. I'm reaching out to see if there is a spot on the website or a way that I could purchase a Barbecue Central Show shirt, maybe an apron, or some stickers I could put on my coolers. Thanks and look forward to new shows as well as going back and listening to the ones from years past. Regards, Matt. Matt, you have a long and extensive archive to get back to on the live show only starting February 7th of 2008, if you can believe it. So large sweeping archive and then two years before that in podcast, which you probably can't find anymore, but I have those shows if you're interested. I don't normally sell stuff to my audience. I'm not that kind of a host. I'm not that kind of a guy. I'm not here to make money off the back of my audience. I'm not going to sell you cushioned chairs. I'm not going to send you branded microphones. I'm not going to sell you stupid stickers or anything like this or T-shirts. That being said, there was a point in time, I think 2018, I did the rebrand, got the new logo. I made a crap load of T-shirts starting with extra large and then going to double XL and then 3x fat, 4x fat, and 5x fat. And I was selling them. And do you know what? Not a one of you mother effers even bought it. And I said, you know what? Lesson learned right there. So people told me, don't get into the shirt business thinking that you're going to make money. And I've got, if I'm going to do it, I'm a businessman. I'm all about cheddar. I want that high cheese. But all I ended up with was like 55X fat shirts. And what can I do with those? Nothing. Cover up in the winter? All right. But then what? So I threw them all out. But now I've been getting emails about shirts. So I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Let me continue to live in hypocrisy and say that if you want this shirt that I have on right now, allow me to move my microphone so you can see. Maddie, what does it say? This shirt says the BBQ Central Show will do it live and has the year on it. So well, it's like a uh, election shirt, except yeah. it has nothing to do with politics. The BBQ Central Show 24 tagline will do it live. If you want... The shirt that I am wearing right now, the election style shirt. And if you are listening on podcast and you want to see what it looks like, hit the video archive if you want. I will take your orders now through the end of September. So you have six weeks, roughly. Here's what we're going to do. You have six weeks. So at the end of September, I will put in one order. I will accumulate all the orders from the folks. I will then put in one order. And then once they come to me here in Cleveland, I will send them to you individually. Does that sound fair? Here's your chance to buy a show shirt and show what a great fan you are. Pricing as follows. And by the way, 
I'm not making any money at that. At this, this is dead broke cost. Normal sizes, which means small through extra large, thirty five bucks for the shirt. And remember, that price includes me shipping it to you in a regular mail or envelope. It's not coming priority or anything. Size 2XL, $37. Size 3XL, $39. Size 4XL, $41. Size 5XL, $43. Size 6XL, you're not allowed to have a shirt. I'm fat shaming you. Get your freaking health in order. And get to a respectable and more healthy 5XL, for Pete's sake. 6XL? What? you got to be kidding me. There are better things to spend your money on than my shirt if you're at 6XL. Mainly a salad. That's better money spent. Wow. Again, I will take your orders now through the end of September. I will then order the shirts... For those who have paid me, I'm not floating the boat on this one. I will send you your shirts after I am A, paid. We get the order in. They come to my house. I will ship them out to you in a timely manner. And I know a lot of you are laughing at that, but I will do it in a timely manner because this is business and business is business. So maybe sometime in October, you will have the shirt. And then you can wear it every day if you want. I don't give a shit. It washes just fine. I've worn the shirt many times now. Owning it, it's very comfortable. I probably would have sized down a little bit. I would have went to a large. I know, shocking. Also, I do want to promote Hartville Hardware's Grill Fest 10th Annual. September 21st. It's happening. Mike Lang doing the Weber demo, Captain Ron doing the Big Green Egg demo, new this year on the demo stage, Matt Frampton, Pizziola to Pizziolas, doing the pizza demo, and of course our pal Danielle Bennett, a.k.a. Diva Q, doing the Traeger demos. So if you're going to be live, local, and late breaking around the greater Cleveland area, September 21st, I'm inviting you to go down south and then a little bit east, about an hour to the Hartville Hardware Store where Grill Fest, the 10th anniversary, will be taking place. And all day long, your humble host will be hosting and emceeing the events all the way through. So again, that is Saturday, September 21st. Mike Lang, Captain Ron, Matt Frampton, and Danielle Bennett. Now we're caught up on the reeds, right? We're not? No. Well, we have one more on the computer, but no more paper reads. No more paper reads. No more paper reads. All right, right, so uh, we're going to wet our whistles here. We'll come back and wrap the show. Play, uh, Play the big voice guy ID when I'm done talking. Remember that one? Barbecue Central Show ID over on the other deck. Remember that one? You don't remember it? I can't hear you. I'm getting to it. All right. Uh, We'll be back right after this. Stick around. Let's get back to a guy who has more experience giving you his opinion than he actually has cooking. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rampy. Oh, give me one second here. This portion of the show is sponsored by JRE Tobacco, a family-run brand and a vertically integrated manufacturer known for its authentic Corojo tobacco grown at the JRE Tobacco Farm in Honduras. Corojo. Sorry. This is the original Cuban seed of Corojo. Its flavor characteristics are... Okay. 
Its flavor characteristics are unique and it brings you back to the golden era of cigars in Cuba from 1947 to 1961. Their approach in blending prioritizes flavor to give contemporary smokers a sensational experience with a range of blends, making sure there is something for everyone to enjoy. Find a retailer near you by visiting jretobacco.com. Oh, yes. One of my favorites. I love the Corojo Reserva. It's one oh, of my yeah. favorites. I, I, I don't smoke cigars. I don't, I don't know. understand why. I have so many to choose from to I know. tickle your palate. So you can say, oh, I think I will like this one. Or I think I like that one. This one is too rich. This one's too gross. But it's too stinky and smelly, right? Yeah. Right. Right. But you're missing out on a flavor experience. And they're not addictive. And uh, there have been medical studies that have proven. Also, I have cigar experts on the show that you can smoke one to two a day. It has no, no negative health impacts on you at all. And there's uh, there is medical, clinical, um, what do you call it? Information to back that up. This isn't Evidence. just me talking up. Yeah, there were medical studies done, hmm. and it's been shown. That's why the federal government had to uh, declassify premium hand rolled cigars, so they weren't lumped in with cigarettes and the shitty cigars like the ones like have a tampas and the Phillies blunts that you kids smoke when you put the weed in there uh, those are not premium hand rolled cigars so mm. those are now being uh, those are now being put in a separate category altogether so we thank our pals over at JRE Tobacco and uh, of course you know the Aladino Lounge over in Greensburg uh, they have oh. a uh, Aladino sponsored lounge over in Greensburg from uh, Nick Lagosta, I believe, is the the name of that cigar shop over there. Just moments away from um, Bobby's Sorry about home, that. so hmm? or wherever she's living nowadays. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Once sure. again, uh, Maddie, before we close up shop here, let's get a final tally on where we are with Smash Burgers or regular burgers in the YouTube poll question of the week. 47% of people prefer regular burgers and 53% prefer smash burgers. All right. So smash burgers are going to win it. All right. Uh, go ahead and fade us out. Let's go ahead and make tracks out of here this evening. We've said all we can possibly say here. All the way back in the first hour, Wes Wright joined us from cookoutnews.com. And we talked about next grill. We talked about wireless new thermometers, some other things as well. Second hour. Susie Bullock from Hay Grill Hay was on, and we talked about Labor Day menu items. We talked about where wireless thermometers might fit, in her opinion, into the general consuming public. We also talked about the high honor that was given to her meeting me in person, middle of June at Thermalworks event. Who would love that? And then, sprinkled throughout the show is... The latest and only and current show producer and engineer who will also be hosting the show on August 27th, which is a week from tonight, Maddie Rempe. And she has plenty of content to share with you next week, plus a potential high-level interview. Go ahead. If I may, I just need to address this one comment that just came in. Do you, do you need to pause the music? Go ahead. You can pause. Oh, okay. Just really quick. Oh, wow. Now it's really quiet. Yes. Well, that's what happens. Um, Somebody said, what makes this great Who is said it? Guy the Cooking Sam. Oh, ne'er Not well. Sam the Cooking Guy, ne'er my well. friend. Yes. My he friend. says, what makes this great is that it's clear that your kids never listen to your show. I feel for you, Greg. <laughs> and I would just like to say this because I addressed this. When did I say this? When did I say this the other day? On our stealth on our stealth, stealth cast. cast that was yesterday and now i have to call you out because oh i boy. said i might not listen to it and watch it on my phone but my bedroom is right above us that's right so i hear it every tuesday night at least 50 percent of everything for the hear. full two hours yeah i hear it all so don't say that i don't listen to the show maybe Sorry. we should ban guy the cooking sam maybe, from the show next yeah, week don't watch don't watch the show We'll just I will ban find it. it. We won't even tell them. We'll just ban them. Yeah, I like that. I have that 
I like ability. That. I can go onto the internet and I can ban people. That's good. Yes. I don't like this. Okay. Back to this now. All right. Not sure exactly. Oh, Maddie was sprinkled. So she's going to host the show next Tuesday, 827. The whole two hours. And then I'll be back the following week. So, how do I always leave September 11th, 2001? I will never forget. And until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, the great Red. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Some call I the miss fool, it. Some call the but I say right, Greg Rempe is the greatest thing to happen to. You want him to play? Uh, now, hold on a second. Okay. We'll just reset this real quick. Hit the stop button on that particular deck because that'll just reset it. Uh huh. Leave it there. Okay. So, how do I always leave you? September 11th, 2001. I will never forget. And until a week from this coming Tuesday, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe, saying, Shaboom! Shaboom! It's Sam the Cooking Guy, and you're listening to the Barbecue Central Show. Some call him a fool, some even call him a douchebag. But I say Greg Rempe is the greatest thing to happen to barbecue since caveman.